At the age of 24, I started my first business. I was fresh from university. I'd spent a few years working for a building material company, exporting building materials and timber to the South Pacific. You see, the product I decided to focus on was wood. I'd spent some time in the South Pacific, and I'd seen people in the South Pacific harvesting their relatively limited timber resources, and I figured it was only a matter of time before these people ran out. New Zealand, on the other hand, has a massive timber resource. We have 1.8 million hectares of plantation timber. And from that 1.8 million hectares, we harvest 28 million cubic meters every year on an annual sustainable yield. That's one million of those log trucks every year. And we do that sustainably. So perfect. I've got a business model uh, where I've got a market that's going to increase in demand, and I've got a plantation resource, a sustainable resource here in New Zealand. This is going to be really good for me. Even better, we could take the timber, we can make it durable by treating it so that our offering in the South Pacific was not just sustainable, it was also durable. These timbers were going to last for a long time and hopefully house a lot of people. Perfect, right? So um, the business started. I, um, I had a slow start and eventually I was exporting millions of metres of timber to the South Pacific. Things were going great. Until one day, I got a telephone call. It was from a customer in American Samoa, and she was really upset. She advised me that my products had poisoned kids, and there were kids in hospital with headaches and nosebleeds, and it was all my fault. As you can imagine, um, it was a bit disconcerting, and I was a little bit upset when I heard this news because I was exporting timber products that were available in New Zealand, they were certified in New Zealand, and they were totally okay as far as New Zealand was concerned. So it was, a bit of a, um, yeah, it was a bit of a concern for me, as you, can, as you can imagine. Two weeks later, I got an email from the US Environmental Protection Agency telling me that my products weren't acceptable, they weren't registered in, in the US, and until I could have a product that was registered with the US EPA, my products weren't allowed in American Samoa. This was a problem. It was a problem on a, on a, on a number of fronts. Firstly, I had a whole bunch of timber heading to American Samoa on boats. I also had timber on the port in American Samoa. None of that stuff was allowed in the country. It all had to be returned to New Zealand, and um, it was a major problem for me. Ethically, I felt I've, I've done something wrong. No one wants to, to poison kids. And commercially, my fl fledgling business had taken a major hit. Frantically, I searched online, as you do when you think you've made a mistake, and I kept seeing these acronyms. The first one was CCA. And I knew I was treating my timber with CCA, but I didn't really understand that much about it. CCA stands for copper, chrome, and arsenic. And when you say those words out loud, it's pretty obvious <laughs> that it's not good, right? Arsenic, everyone knows arsenic's a poison. And if you've ever watched that movie, Erin Brockovich, you'll know that chrome is not so good either. I learned a little bit about CCA. I learned that CCA was invented in 1933. How many other technologies do we have from 1933 that we use? I also learned that we produce a massive amount of this product, 650,000 cubic meters per year in New Zealand. That's 150 kilos per person per year. We're one of the biggest users in the world. And I also learned that the US and Europe, Japan and a few other nations had already banned or restricted the use of CCA. So I was sort of getting some mixed messages here. It's still okay in New Zealand though. Why is that? I learned that treated timber in particular was a major issue, particularly at the end of life situation. When uh, building materials are used, there's offcuts generated. So we're talking about a massive problem here. 650,000 cubic meters of this product produced, and around 20% of all construction waste is wood. This is a major problem. What was scarier was this number here, 5.5 nanograms per cubic metre. What's 5.5 nanograms per cubic metre? That is the World Health Organization acceptable level for arsenic in the air. The scary numbers I found online was this 
excerpt from the Nelson City Council, this is what's happening in winter in New Zealand. The levels are 10 to 15 times the World Health Organization acceptable limit. How is this happening? Well, everyday New Zealanders are burning CCA-treated offcuts in their fireplace, turning that wood into arsenic in the air, and we are literally poisoning ourselves. Why are we doing this? And what can we do about it? It's a serious problem. And um, Nelson City Council needs to be commended for putting this data online because a lot of other councils haven't done that. Well, in my business, I still sell a percentage of CCA-treated timber, but I'm firmly focused on what I like to think of as the future of wood. The future of wood doesn't have chemicals. The future of wood means timber products that can be returned to the earth or burnt without any serious ramifications for people or the environment. Some of the technology we're using today um, here in New Zealand is, is fairly radical in terms of New Zealand's um, history in timber. What we do is we, we use a technology called thermal modification, where we take normal pine, we put it into a specially designed kiln that looks a bit like this, goes into the kiln, and after about 30 or 40 hours, we can permanently alter the structure of the timber using only heat and steam. This is great because at the end of life, the timber can be mulched or burnt safely without any harm to people and the environment. It comes out looking chocolate brown too, which is a nice benefit. The left-hand side there, you can see the untreated pine, and on the right-hand side, you can see the product that's been thermally modified. This technology is fantastic. The issue, of course, is that it's more expensive than chemically treated timber. And I guess the question you could, you could counter with, or the, the answer you could um, counter with, is the fact that if the environmental costs and, and, and the potential health costs to chemically treated timber was built into the price of chemically treated timber, well, um, there wouldn't be a problem here. But that's currently not built into the price. Those costs are either incurred by the environment or by people's health. So we've really battled to get a technology like this into the market in New Zealand. We're kind of thinking the Tesla model where you start at a really high price point with a product that's amazing, drive some economies of scale, and get the price down where it's affordable for everyone. But it has been a really hard slog for us to get these new technologies into the market. And support from us has come from very surprising places. This building here was instigated by the, the Naituhoi tribe of the central North Island. It's a beautiful building, and it's probably the greenest in the country. It's the only uh, living building certified in New Zealand to date, and it uses exclusively New Zealand certified FSC timber, free of redless chemicals like CCA. This is another Tuhoi project, the Lake Waikaramoana Welcome Centre. This project has won over 12 architectural awards, and it features only locally sourced timber and only timbers without chemical preservatives. The, the, the sort of feel you get from working and living in these environments is amazing. Look at the warmth that the timber brings. This is a great place to work. they proven to reduce anxiety levels and make people feel better about themselves. The Vodafone headquarters was also an early uh, win for us. Um, you can see the warmth of the timber. This is also a Green Star certified building. I believe the future of timber, timber is good. Timber, um, we have a massive timber resource here in New Zealand. We have a government committing to plant over a billion trees. And wood is increasingly being recognised as an environmental product. It will be even better when we have wood products that can be safely returned to the earth in just the way that nature intended. Thank you.